On the 8th of November, 1999, the sixth and final episode of Walking With Dinosaurs, Death of a Dynasty, was released. This episode takes place 65 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous in Montana and features the famous creatures hailing from the Hell Creek Formation and as you can imagine, showcases the last days of the dinosaurs before their extinction. The opening scene of this episode is honestly not what I expected. The first creature we see in this episode is the carnivorous mammal Didelphodon. It's a marsupial, most likely possessing a pouch like kangaroos or koalas, yet its design obviously takes inspiration from badgers and more surprising still is that this stocky model is actually not that accurate to the real animal, which was long, slender and built more like an otter. Still, I like the model and I think the fur is impressive for 1999. They are portrayed as scavengers, and the narration states that they specialise in raiding dinosaur nests, which is definitely plausible. As a female approaches a large mound of dirt, she is ambushed and swallowed whole by an angry mother Tyrannosaurus Rex, who then proceeds to roar for the camera, covering it in spit in the process. It then cuts to presumably the same individual silhouetted and roaring into the gorgeous orange sunset, as the title appears. This opening, I think, is essential in nailing down the main themes and story elements of this episode. The huge, impressive dinosaurs having to fend off tiny nest-raiding mammals as well as death, which makes sense considering it's in the title. These scenarios and themes will appear a lot throughout the episode's runtime. The following scene also follows this trend, as the narration states how the constantly moving continents are causing widespread volcanism that have devastated many areas of the globe, and like the footage of volcanoes and barren volcanic ash fields we are shown, the music is very ominous and sinister, which really sets the mood. The atmosphere is filled with poisonous volcanic gases, and the narration states that life on Earth is choking to death, However, this is now thought to not be entirely true, nor is the portrayal of Hell Creek. Whilst volcanoes were still very prevalent, life was not in as desolate of a state as portrayed in this episode, as life was actually recovering from significant volcanic episodes and was thriving again a few million years before the impact. Hell Creek also probably didn't look as decimated as in this episode, as it is shown as islands of green vegetation between ash fields that have been ravaged by lava flows, but these would not have been as prevalent in Hell Creek, as it was thought to have been highly forested and also features swamps and fern prairies. Perhaps the dryness of the dinosaur situation was exaggerated to make it seem more exciting, but it's most likely inaccurate, whatever the reason. In the next scene, we are properly introduced to the king of the dinosaurs himself, Tyrannosaurus Rex, giving us our first good look at the model, and it's not the best I'm afraid. The head is too blocky and shrink-wrapped, the hands are pronated like many other theropods in the series, the tail is far too spindly and the skin texture just looks off. I do at least like the colours, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the T-Rex model. I do, however, really like and appreciate how it's portrayed in this episode, as T-Rex is most often portrayed as an unstoppable, monstrous killing machine in media. However, the Walk with Dinosaurs one is just an animal trying to survive like anything else, as it should be. A male has been attracted to the foot of a volcano to scavenge the carcasses of those that suffocate in the toxic gas clouds. This embodies the overall tone of this episode, sickly. This episode feels sickly and ill, as if everything on Earth is just wanting to be put out of its misery as they struggle through every day. This scene also portrays T-Rex displaying weakness, as he too is susceptible to the gases and we see him almost fall victim to it, and I really like that. The next scene shows an island of greenery, and that it is not conifers that are the dominant plant here, as has been the case for millions of years, but rather newer flowering plants that we first saw back in Giant of the Skies. Along with it, we see more insects such as butterflies, which can only feed on flowers, and the narration explains that there are also flowers that can only be pollinated by insects. This also ties in with the title, as the death of a dynasty may not exclusively refer to the dinosaurs, but also the conifers and how they have ruled the world's greenery for so long, yet now are slowly being displaced. 
The narration also explains that birds are now much more common and are very prevalent, another thing first established in Giant of the Skies. In the next scene, the narration explains how, over time, unique relationships have evolved between different dinosaurs such as the fleet-footed, but unnamed, Thesalosaurus, which I think is just a recolor of the Lealinosaurus model. They are then chased away by the Dromaeosaurus, which is also a recolor of the Utah Raptor model, and is also misplaced as it did not live in Hell Creek and was extinct by this time. But a suitable replacement would be Akira Raptor, another Dromaeosaur that was from the correct place and time. We are then introduced to Ankylosaurus, and sadly this model isn't the best either. Its torso is far too round and should be flatter. The armor scoots probably wouldn't be so raised or that shape, and I can't tell if the model possesses a beak or not, which Ankylosaurus did have. Regardless of the model's accuracy, the color scheme is very appealing, and the narration explains how it is another example of co-evolution amongst dinosaurs, as it has specifically evolved to withstand attacks from predators like T-Rex, and I really like that. In the next scene, we see an abandoned T-Rex nest being raided by a Didelphodon, as the narration explains that soon the mammal's time will come to dominate the earth when the dinosaurs become extinct. This is exemplified by how prevalent the mammals throughout the episode's runtime are. I hinted at this in my last review with how they only appeared briefly there, but now are a common nuisance for the dinosaurs. This is further symbolised by the T-Rex embryo inside one of the eggs already being dead due to acidic pollution. The mother then calls for a new mate before we are introduced to Taurosaurus, and I want to praise the producers for going with this genus as the main ceratopsid for this episode, rather than the more famous triceratops, and the model is still fairly accurate too. The only problem I could really make out was that the tail was probably too short and spindly, but otherwise it's a good representation. I know it's commonly speculated that ceratopsids like Taurosaurus may have had quills, but this wasn't commonplace at the time, so I won't criticise them for it. I know some paleo enthusiasts will address the theory that Taurosaurus is actually just a growth stage of Triceratops, but for the sake of this episode and review, they are separate taxa. I like that we see them use their horns for rutting, as this is supported by fossil evidence, and not just as weapons to impale the Tyrannosaurus. In the next scene, we hear the female Tyrannosaur continue to call for a mate before we see a male with the corpse of a young Triceratops as a gift for the female, and I like the speculative behaviour as it seems plausible. We then see the pair mating. Again, I like that we see it acting as an animal, and wait, did that corpse just rotate between shots? We are then introduced to a Nata Titan, which are now reclassified as Edmontosaurus, as a herd wanders between islands of greenery, as the narration explains that they have not evolved to live in a world ravaged by ash and volcanoes, possibly foreshadowing their demise. The model is fairly accurate, but similar to the Mutaburosaurus, they have been portrayed with iguanodon-like thumb claws. Their front feet should also all be combined into a singular fleshy pad, and as of this year, be covered in a large hoof. This was not known at the time, however, so I won't criticise what is an otherwise solid model. We then see the female T-Rex scare off her mate so she can lay her eggs in the near future. In the next scene, we are introduced to one of the most problematic animals in the series, the Quetzalcoatlus. Firstly, it is obviously just a slightly altered Ornithocyrus model, even using the same sound effects. Secondly, the model doesn't resemble Quetzalcoatlus much at all, with the head being entirely the wrong shape. Thirdly, it is portrayed as a piscivore, whereas Quetzalcoatlus is thought to be more of a terrestrial predator. Fourthly, the narration states that pterosaurs are rare now as they are being outcompeted by birds, a notion that was first hinted at in Giant of the Skies, but now has little support. Finally, albeit a nitpick, Quetzalcoatlus isn't known from Hell Creek, but there are pterosaur remains known from there that may belong to Quetzalcoatlus. Whilst it does exemplify another dynasty meeting its death, in this case, pterosaurs, it just feels so lazy and shoehorned in, and I just wish the orange crocodile would have pulled him under the water like it did in the book, as I think that would have been a more fitting way for it to go, personally. A few months later, the mother T-Rex has made a new nest and is keeping watch, scaring off scavengers like dromaeosaurs and the ever-present didelphodon. We then see a deceptively beautiful volcanic sunset before an ominous meteor shower, unbeknownst to the dinosaurs, the vanguard of a giant meteor. 
A herd of Taurosaurus are being harassed by a pair of Dromaeosaurs. They attack a juvenile in the moonlight, and the next day we see the young dinosaur didn't make it, as his carcass is scavenged by Didelphodon, as the narration explains that too few dinosaur young are being born in this poisoned world. Meanwhile, the Didelphodon are thriving on the dwindling behemoths, further foreshadowing their future success and the end for the dinosaurs. In the next scene, the Anatotitan herd finally reaches what appears to be salvation in the form of a swampy island of greenery. Yet, in a sad, ironic twist, it is anything but. The orange crocodile from earlier starts to approach only for the female Tyrannosaur to leap out of nowhere and ambush an unlucky Hadrosaur. We then see that only three of her eggs have hatched, and hatchlings eagerly await for food from her. We see one is picked on and probably killed by the others, and I really like this speculation, as it is depressingly common in nature. We then see a snake stalking the chicks, and I like its inclusion, as similarly to the inclusion of mammals, having more modern animals both helps the audience believe this world is real, or at least was real, and it also shows how a more modern age is on the horizon, as the age of the dinosaurs nears its end. Whilst the Tyrannosaur chicks pester the snake, an Ankylosaurus approaches, and the mother must take action, and I like that the narration states that she would normally retreat, rather than unrealistically fighting every animal. We then see her take a lethal blow from the Ankylosaur's tail club, and the mother dies with her chicks waiting for her to wake up to no avail. Finally, the narration teases how the fate of all giant dinosaurs is sealed, as the giant meteorite strikes the earth with a giant flash of light, followed by shockwaves, and lastly, the immensely powerful blast front that obliterates almost everything in its path. A reign of fire heralds the end of the age of dinosaurs, and it is genuinely sad seeing the dinosaurs go after bearing witness to their journey from beginning to end. I do, however, wish the extinction scene had been more developed, as it does feel rushed and a bit tagged on at the end. Regardless, I really like the ending where we see that the modern descendants of dinosaurs are still with us. The birds. Overall, whilst I firmly believe there is no such thing as a bad episode of Walking With Dinosaurs, Death of a Dynasty is probably my least favourite of the lot, as I feel it has the most issues in terms of story and creature models. The tone of this episode does also feel a bit exaggerated to me personally, but it is effective at symbolising how the age of the dinosaurs is drawing to a close. Regardless, I still think Death of a Dynasty is great, and a fitting ending to what has been a magnificent journey. I'd like to briefly go over how I would rank each episode based on my personal enjoyment, and for the reasons I just said, Death of a Dynasty is at the bottom at number 6. Number 5 is Time of the Titans. I think this will probably be the biggest shocker, as I think for many, this is the definitive episode of Walking With Dinosaurs, and whilst I do mostly agree, my one problem with that episode is that the Diplodocus gets too much screen time in my opinion, and I personally would have preferred if we could have learned more about the other fascinating creatures of the Morrison Formation, which luckily, the Ballad of Big Al did do. Now my top two and bottom two were easy to pick, the middle two I had trouble deciding on, so at number four, it's Spirits of the Ice Forest. Only by a hair though, is this at number four, as I honestly do think I enjoy just as much as my choice for number three, and I can't really explain why it's lower honestly, as I love both of them so equally. As such, at number three, it's Giant of the Skies, the storytelling, I think, is probably what made me rank it slightly above Spirits of the Ice Forest, but honestly, if you ask me on a different day, they could switch. At number two, it's New Blood. I can't really find anything wrong with this episode, and the Triassic is my personal favourite geological time period, so I may be biased, but I feel like this episode just had the right balance of everything. And at number one, it's Cruel Sea. This has been my favourite since I was a kid, and I honestly don't see that changing anytime soon. The storytelling, the visuals, the music, this one just has it all. And while the accuracy is quite shaky, the overall presentation is honestly sublime, and that's why it's my pick for number one. I also think I need to explain myself for taking such a long hiatus between reviews. 
Essentially, it's a combination of very unfortunate events in my personal life. 2019 was the worst year of my life. The first few months of the year had already been rough, but then, during the summer of 2019, my grandma died from a heart attack. As you can imagine, my family and I were shocked and grieving. Then, towards the end of October, I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression. Coping with this was tough enough on my mental health, and some days were so hard that I'm honestly just happy I'm still here. Then one final punch in the gut at the year's end, after falling and suffering a major injury to his neck and central nervous system, my granddad had been hospitalised, his arms were paralysed. Then a few days later, my granddad passed away in hospital, one day before his 87th birthday. All of these events combined were just too much to handle, and I believe you guys deserve an explanation as to why I have been gone for so long. I'm so thankful for my friends, my family, and all of you for watching my videos, and I'm glad to be back. Thank you all so much for watching. I have adored looking back at this series that holds such a special place in my heart. Thank you. Bye bye now.